Hey everyone, David here with your weekly Mouthful of David video. Uh, like usual, we'll start with the weekly podcast update. So our second episode of our two-parter about Vladimir Lenin and the Russian Revolution will be coming out soon. Uh, this Friday, actually, so be on the lookout for that. After that, uh, our next episodes that we're going to drop are going to be a two-parter about boxing heavyweight champions. You know, not just talking about the champions themselves, but also kind of what's historically and sociologically interesting about these champions. Which, of course, you know, Muhammad Ali will be someone that we talk about at the end, but uh, there's some other lesser-known ones as well, so I'm pretty excited for that one to drop. So be on the lookout for all of that coming up. Uh, anyway, this week I am going to talk about more books about Latin American history. If you didn't catch last week's video, uh, give it a listen if you get the chance. I basically give book recommendations for Latin American history as a whole, Mexican history, and then Central American history as a whole. So, you know, a couple books that talk about uh, uh, Central America in general and not any one country in particular. So, today's video I'll be talking about history books for individual Central American countries, uh, history books for Cuban history, and then finally, uh, sort of South America, although I don't have as much books for that, but I do have a couple at least that I'll, I'll talk about. So to start things off with, uh, we will talk about Guatemala. And so I have the two, uh, you know, most uh, important works, or, or, you know, what are considered the two most important works in the field which are Bitter Fruit by Stephen Kinzer and Shattered Hope by Piero Glejesis. And so both of these basically talk about the 1954 U.S. coup in Guatemala, uh, which was against a democratically elected president, Jacobo Arbenz, and it replaced him with a military dictatorship, which unfortunately becomes a recurring theme in Latin American history. So... Uh, again, you know, these are the two just seminal works in the field uh, about that topic. And they also have kind of different arguments. Uh, you know, we can get into that, I think, another time. But uh, it's interesting to read both and, you know, kind of decide for yourself uh, which argument you find a little bit more compelling. There was also on the same topic uh, a book called Secret History by Nick Colather. That was released, uh, I think, in the late 90s or early 2000s. And it basically it, it basically uh, summarizes the coup, but instead of being the writing of the author, it uses it just explicitly shares a lot of the uh, internal CIA documents that were recently released at the writing at the time of the writing of the book. Uh, so it's it's partially the words of the actual historian, but then also just a lot of files that, uh, you know, just directly show what was going on at the time. So, uh, you know, you read those books and you are an expert on the topic. Uh, moving on to El Salvador. So a really good book that talks about just the experiences of El Salvador and its civil war during the Cold War is The Long War by James Dunkerley. And so El Salvador uh, is one where there was a U.S.-backed dictatorship in the country that never really got overthrown. Uh, the way that, you know, Guatemala has democracy in 1944 to 1954, gets overthrown, replaced with a dictatorship. Uh, Nicaragua, which we'll get to in a second, you know, they had the Sandinista Revolution in uh, 1979. Uh, El Salvador never actually had a successful revolution, so it's just been a series of, of civil wars and, and protests and everything. Uh, against different military regimes, and so The Long War is a really good job that talks, or a really good book that does a good job of talking about it. And then uh, this book, The Massacre at El Mesote, by uh, Mark Danner, uh, zooms in on one of the massacres that happened during this time. It just really shows, you know, how horrific it was, um, how how horrifying the horrifying lengths that you know these these regimes were willing to go. Uh, to in order to retain power. Uh, so it's a very, very powerful read. And so, you know, you read The Long War to get, like, a good overview of everything that happened. You read the book about the massacre that I just showed you uh, to kind of zoom in a little bit. And uh, again, you know, you'll you'll have a really uh, good good view of everything that, that happened. Um, moving on to Nicaragua, uh, the book Blood of Brothers by Stephen Kinzer, who uh, also wrote the book Bitter Fruit that I talked about a minute ago for Guatemala. Uh, is a good one because, you know, Stephen Kinzer and Blood of Brothers, uh, he is 
very sympathetic to the Sandinistas, but he also doesn't gloss over, you know, some of the issues that they had as well uh, when they had the revolution in 1979 and, you know, overthrew the U.S.-backed dictator Anastasio Somoza uh, Jr. Um, you know, you can tell that Kinzer is generally on their side, but not so much on their side that he's going to, you know, ignore the issues that they did have. Uh, and then another book that I highly recommend and that I will read a passage from at the end of this video is The Country Under My Skin by Giaconda Belli. And Belli was actually a female Sandinista fighter from the Nicaraguan Revolution. But she also kind of came to see some of the flaws in the Sandinistas and became a critic of uh, Daniel Ortega, who became the, the president under the Sandinistas. Um, and so, you know, that's another book like the Kinzer one where it's not, you know, U.S. propaganda and it is uh, obviously going to give you a very Sandinista heavy side, uh, but not an uncritical side either. And so, you know, you, you read Blood of Brothers to, again, get a just general historical account of what happened. You read The Country Under My Skin uh, to get a personal account uh, from a Sandinista who, again, is in no way perfectly... Uh, blind to what what else is going on, you know, blind to problems in uh, uh, among the Sandinistas themselves. And you read those and you get a, a good uh, a good overview. Uh, now going on to Cuba. Uh, man, whew, talk about a controversial subject, right? So there's a few books uh, that I'd recommend that, again, kind of give a good, uh, well-rounded view of, of Cuba since the Cuban Revolution. So Compañero by Jorge Castaneda Gutman is a biography of uh, Che Guevara, but also uh, uh, gives its, you know, take on the Cuban Revolution. And it's generally sympathetic, but not un uncritically so. Uh, then there's reminiscences, reminiscences of the Cuban Revolution by Che Guevara himself, obviously very, like, pro-Che. Uh, but then you can kind of balance that out with The Double Life of Fidel Castro by Juan Reynaldo Sanchez. And the double life of Fidel Castro, uh, the, the person who wrote that, was actually one of Fidel's lieutenants before he kind of shifted away from the revolution and actually became a, a uh, refugee in the United States. So, you know, you kind of have the, the words of Che himself, and then you have someone who's anti-Castro to kind of, you know, balance out the whole picture. And so, once you've done that, uh, then you can read the book Conflicting Missions which is actually about Cuban uh, foreign policy in Africa from 1959 to 1976. And uh, it's just a really, really good book about Cuban policy in, uh, in Africa. And it's by Piero Glejesis, uh, who is the author of the other uh, book about Guatemala that I showed you, Shattered Hope. Uh, so, you know, you kind of see some, some recurring names here. Um, and then... This book, again, uh, Conflicting Missions, about African uh, foreign policy from Cuba. Uh, it has a sequel book by the same author called Visions of Freedom. And that one just covers Cuban foreign policy in Africa from 1977 to, I believe, the early 90s. Something like that. Uh, I, I like skimmed that one for grad school. Don't tell my advisors. But um, I, I don't actually own a copy. Um Anyways, when it comes to South America, I'm not as well-versed. You know, I've taken classes uh, on the topic and stuff. Uh, I have, you know, read books. But I definitely don't have the same depth of knowledge that I do for Mexico, Central America, and Cuba. But uh, that being said, I still have a couple book recommendations. So Chile is kind of the main uh, South American country that I know the most about. Um... In 1973, there was a coup against the democratically elected Marxist president, Salvador Allende. Uh, so to kind of get an idea of that, uh, of, of his presidency, check out Salvador Allende, Revolutionary Democrat, by Victor Figueroa Clark. Uh, then also check out Allende's Chile, Chile and Inter-American Cold War by Tanya Harmer. And so the second book, uh, it talks not just about Allende himself, but also like Allende's role within, like, Latin American politics at the time. It, it mixes both of them, and so it gives you a good uh, view of kind of everything that was going on. Uh, and then after that, uh, after the 1973 coup, you know, the Chilean government was taken over by a dictator named Agosto Pinochet. And so to learn more about his just vile presidency, 
Uh, check out A Nation of Enemies by Pamela Constable and Arturo Valenzuela. Uh, another good one. Oh, no, nah, I don't have it with me, but there's there's a, another book that's pretty solid. But honestly, I think the books that I just recommended are, are better. So I won't try to remember what that other one is called. But um, a couple other just uh, random books about South America that I have. One is Argentina, the United States and the Anti-Communist Crusade in Central America uh, from 1977 to 1984. And this one is by Ariel C. Armini. And uh, this one basically just talks about uh, the role of the South American governments, but especially Argentina, uh, in funding and training a lot of the just horrific military dictatorships that were in Central America. Because South America's general history is that it was... Um, generally speaking, more affluent and stable than Central America. And so even when South America, you know, had these military dictatorships step in, there wasn't as much chaos and instability and violence and poverty as there was in Central America. So, uh, you know, this book is really good at kind of showing that uh, the United States played a role. You know, they were the, the main bad guy in Central America, uh, or the main foreign bad guy in Central America. Uh, for who they funded and supported, but also the South American dictatorships uh, bear the blame as well. So check that out. Um, the the next one is The Plot to Overthrow Venezuela by Dan Kovalik and with a forward by Oliver Stone. And it, it's basically about how the U.S. is trying to overthrow the uh, government of Venezuela, which isn't perfect, but definitely not something the U.S. has any business in interfering in. Uh, finally, The Rise of Evo Morales and the Mas by Sven Harten. Uh, it's just a good book about the rise of Evo Morales and his party, uh, you know, his like left-wing indigenous party uh, in Bolivia. So uh, those are some book recommendations. Uh, I can't speak. Those are some book recommendations that I have. Uh, and I would actually just like to end with the last couple paragraphs of the Gioconda Gio uh, Belly uh, memoir, I guess you could say, A Country Under My Skin, because I think these are beautiful words that deserve to be heard. I dare say, after the life I have lived, that there is nothing quixotic or romantic in wanting to change the world. It is possible. It is the age-old vocation of all humanity. I can't think of a better life than one dedicated to passion, to dreams, to the stubbornness that defies chaos and dis disillusionment. Our world, filled with possibilities, is and will be the result of the efforts offered up by us, its inhabitants. Just as life was a consequence of trial and error, the social organization that brings us the full realization of our potential as a species will issue from the ebb and flow of struggles we jointly undertake across the globe. The future is a construct that is shaped in the present, and that is why, to be responsible in the present, is the only way of taking serious responsibility for the future. What is important is not the fulfillment of all one's dreams, but the stubborn determination to continue dreaming. We will have grandchildren, and they will have children too. The world will continue, and whether we know it or not, we are deciding its course every day. My deaths, my dead, were not in vain. This is a relay race to the end of time. In the United States, just as in Nicaragua, I am the same Quixota who learned through life's battles that defeat can be as much of an illusion as victory. Thanks for listening, everyone. Have a good week and stay safe out there.